Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Vincent W, Bob F, Istvan V, Stephen M, and Sri Krishna S. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. From the Wolfpack Berlin, some well-known drone flyers over Giga Berlin, they said on Friday, Tesla has banned drone flights over Giga Berlin. They'll only be allowed once a quarter in the future. Saying the only thing that would still be allowed are drone flights outside of the Tesla grounds. Not sure why, but all drone operators, please be careful and respectful because it would be a shame if this same ban moved to the United States and specifically at Giga Austin. We learn a lot from those drone flyover, so hopefully it does not get to that point. At Giga Berlin, Tesla is hiring for a content and programs associate. This role will primarily focus on factory tours and they will present compelling content to a broad audience, planning and executing events and interacting with various stakeholders, both public and internal. So upcoming factory tours of Giga Berlin. Now I would imagine that cell phone or camera use will be very limited if not outright prohibited. But either way, this sounds like a cool position to be more community facing and engaging. Speaking of factory tours, Giga Nevada has been hosting some for students in this case in Carson City. But as far as I know, factory tours of Fremont are still closed at least for now. Please somebody let me know if that's not accurate. Back to this new role at Giga Berlin, they'll raise awareness for Tesla's products and mission and engage with customers, prospects, fans, and other stakeholders, a roundabout way of PR. In case you're new, these articles always get a ton of attention when a Tesla is spotted with a LiDAR on it, but this is just for testing purposes. No, nope, as far as I know, Tesla will not be producing any vehicles with LiDAR. According to Chris Zhang, he's saying that Tesla is going to replace the wood trim on the Model 3 with a non-woven fabric. It sounds like this wooden trim piece right here is set to be replaced with something like Alcantara or Micro Suede, which is non-woven. Why would Tesla move to a non-woven material? Well, lower production cost, excellent vibration dampening, soft aesthetics, and customizability. In addition, the construction is highly moldable and they're relatively lightweight. There was no official timeline given, but of course I would imagine this is set to roll out with the new Project Highland, and we could start seeing that here in the next few months. So what you're looking at is not an official picture, but what a Tesla Model 3 could look like with some sort of non-woven material. And for what it's worth, this report did say that this could roll out to other Tesla models in the future as well. I'm curious though, do you prefer the wood look or would you like to see something different? In case you see this headline about another fatal Tesla crash involving an emergency vehicle, just know that so far it's unclear whether the car was using autopilot or not. I do think it's very important to add that all Tesla vehicles are still level 2 ADAS, which means at the end of the day, whether autopilot is on or not, the driver is still always responsible. I'm only even mentioning this crash because for the last year or so, NHTSA has been investigating Tesla for autopilot's ability to actually detect these emergency vehicles, specifically when they're parked on the road. So far though, we don't know anything about this specific case. Tesla's CCS Combo 1 adapter has been reduced to $175. It was previously $250, so a 30% price reduction. Currently though, this is out of stock. We got the latest weekly insurance registration data for Tesla China, the number 5,913. Troy Tesla's prediction was 5,900. There are two important things to remember with this latest number. First, most of Tesla's production during this time is actually meant for export. And two, we've been told that parts of the Model 3 production line are currently shut down for ongoing upgrades. Here's the same data in chart form. Personally though, for now, I'm sticking to my guns and I'm not going to try to do any analysis, at least for the next few weeks, once we get some more numbers that are actually focused on more domestic delivery production. In some exciting news today, we got a new press release from Magnus Energy Technologies. They have signed a new offtake agreement with Tesla for anode active material production, and there will be a new United States facility that is actually processing graphite that Magnus will be mining in Tanzania. 
This offtake agreement is just Tesla putting up some money up front to secure some of the future supply from this operation. And of course, on the Magnus side, it's just their way of ensuring that they actually have some customers for their future operations because this facility is not yet built. Don't worry, I'll contextualize these numbers here shortly. Just note that this does contain a customer option to increase the amount. This supply won't start until February of 2025, and it should be noted the agreement is conditional on Magnus securing a final location for its commercial AAM facility by June 30th, 2023. And the plan is to produce material from a pilot plant by March 31st, 2024. The specific US location has not yet been chosen. Jordan from The Limiting Factor has this initial amount equivalent to about 18 gigawatt hours worth of material of cells per year, which is 18 million kilowatt hours. So if we assume an average battery pack size of 75 kilowatt hours, that would be enough for about 240,000 Teslas per year. For some context, this initial deal would have been equivalent to about 18% of Tesla's deliveries for 2022 using their 1.33 million delivery figure. Remember though, there's an option in the contract for this deal to essentially double, which would then take the amount to about 500,000 Tesla vehicles per year. So essentially Tesla has locked in a fixed price that it likes for the years 2025 to 2028, given that this is a three year deal to start. Magnus also already has a United States subsidiary producing lithium ion batteries in Endicott, New York. Not sure if that will be involved in this deal or with Tesla at all in the future, but the equipment orders have been placed and there are new hires lined up for this initial pilot plant production. Here's a clip from last week from Benchmark Source on the natural flake graphite market. 2022 was actually the first year where we saw demand from the battery anode value chain for flake graphite actually overtake cumulative demand from all other traditional industrial end sectors. Looking forward to 2023, we expect demand for the battery anode value chain to exceed 60% of total market demand for flake graphite. In simple terms, the EV industry now makes up over 50% of all of the demand for natural flake graphite. It can take several years for a new flake graphite mine to reach the market. And currently, the pace of demand side growth from the battery anode value chain is really outpacing the speed of new mine development within the flake graphite market. Should we see investment into lots of new flake graphite mines at once, then we should absolutely see the speed of supply side development keep up with demand growth given that graphite is relatively abundant in the ground, but currently we're just really not seeing the level and speed of investment required to keep up with the demand side of the industry. Translating what he just said, if these legacy OEMs don't get serious about securing some graphite supply for all of these batteries that they're professing to have over the next few years, they will have trouble acquiring the resource. What may be the full version of FSD Beta V11.3 release notes have gone out to some more employees, so I'm going to throw them up on the screen and give you about two seconds to pause with each section. One notable update with 11.3, after an intervention, you can now send Tesla an anonymous voice message describing your experience to help improve autopilot. If you'd like a more in-depth explanation of the release notes, I think John or Dr. Know-It-All does a great job. His video will be below. In simple terms, we're most likely to see the biggest change for this new single stack when it comes to operation on highways. That's because highway driving has been operated by the legacy stack, which is now a few years old. We also got a few shots of the new visualization in the Tesla UI. So you can see that little tentacle is now replaced with a much wider path that is almost telling us how much area the car is set to take up in terms of where it's going. It looks like the red lines that previously showed you the edge of the road have been replaced by gray lines. Now, now, I can't confirm this next part, but Dirty Tesla is saying that you see how this part is light blue and this part up here is more dark blue. He's saying that change in the hue is basically going to signify where the car plans to stop, aka where that color transition is actually happening. On Twitter, at Winners Echelon shared this quick video of the new visualization for FSD 11.3.
And here's the new visualization as you approach a red light. It sounds like Tesla's expedited supercharger rollout is not just in the United States, but they have 84 new supercharger stations planned for Germany, which would increase the current total by about 50%. And what's cool is that one of these stations will be at Giga Berlin, and yes, it will be available to the public, so you can pull up and charge and have a look at Giga Berlin in the process. The second biggest United States public pension fund that was valued at about $311 billion at the end of last month, the California State Teachers Retirement System just tripled its stake in Tesla stock. The pension bought 3 million Tesla shares in Q4 and now they own 4.5 million shares. Ordinarily, pension funds are a bit more conservative, so to see a fund like this that is well known nationwide triple their size in Tesla stock, it is an encouraging sign if you for some reason need one. I know many people, including myself, have their fingers crossed that with a new hardware 4, Tesla will finally bring out a new bird's eye view camera view in the Tesla UI. Some people have argued that there's a patent or a licensing situation for this technology, but we know that many other car companies and many older cars already are using this feature. So could Tesla be stubborn and not pay a licensing fee? It's possible. However, because it looks like Hardware 4 is now going to have 12 cameras up from 9 with some different camera placement, that could be the unlock for Tesla to finally have this bird's eye view technology. Let me know what you think though, Hardware 4, will we see this or not? Back in October 2020, TOSV asked Elon, can we get bird's eye view? To which he said, vector space bird's eye view coming with FSD. Hopefully this is old news and not Elon thinking that the FSD visualization that you can see is somehow what owners are actually looking for when we ask for bird's eye view. It's honestly kind of wild to me that we still need a study to be done to prove that electric vehicles will actually cut down on pollution, but the good news is we finally have a study. The University of Southern California has been studying some zip codes in California the zip codes that saw an increase of zero emission vehicle fleet penetration of just even 2% saw a measurable drop in the average annual NO2 levels. And this drop in NO2 was also correlated with a 3.2% decrease in annual asthma related emergency department visits. I'll drop the article below for more information, but just know that fleet penetration levels for EVs as low as 2% are already showing detectable decreases in air pollution and asthma related emergency visits. Today, Elon's lawyers have filed some new paperwork to try to drop these regulations that the SEC has had Elon under, parlaying the good results from the funding secured trial. Basically, Elon's been trying to undo the settlement he agreed to back in 2018, where he has to have his tweets monitored before he can send them. So he's hoping that this funding secured trial can help him get out of that. It looks like there's a new page on the Tesla Careers site for the manufacturing development program, but this program has been in place now for years. It's essentially geared toward high school graduates to provide them with the financial resources, the coursework, and the experience they need to start working in manufacturing at Tesla. Xpeng has removed LiDAR from its G9 sedan to keep the cost down. The head of product planning for Europe said LiDAR is extremely cost intensive. We want to be at the forefront of ADAS for European car makers, but we also have to offer a competitive price. With LiDAR, we would not be able to do that. Neo is apparently doubling down on the battery swap station model. They're planning to build a thousand new stations in China this year, which would bring the total to 2,300 by the end of the year. Jaguar Land Rover is set to have three new engineering hubs in Europe to develop autonomous vehicle tech in partnership with NVIDIA. The three hubs will be for the next generation Jaguar Land Rover vehicles set to debut in 2025. There was a report that Toyota was going to start making some EV SUVs in Kentucky in the summer of 2025, but a Toyota spokesperson has denied that report, saying there's no decision on when EV production will start in the US. And check this out from Bloomberg. Tesla's Model 3 now sells for $4,930 less than the average new vehicle sold in the US. 
That's the cheapest price Tesla has ever had relative to the typical US vehicle. And the United States pricing has finally been released for the upcoming Ionic 6. There are two different battery pack configurations, a 53 kilowatt hour or a 77. So it starts at $41,600 for the 240 mile variant. Then on the higher end to get the longest range version, 361 miles, that'll cost you $45,500. But remember right now this vehicle does not qualify for the federal tax credit. That's because it's still currently being manufactured in South Korea. You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Loomis 22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.